Okay, so let's take a seat and get started here on a bolster block or something firm beneath you. We're going to do the fast track into our bodies here. So we're going to take a couple of breaths, just rubbing our hands together. We do a few mo movements that just really bring attention to sensation in the body. So just feel heat. And then just pause with those warm hands. Just feel the temperature between your hands. Let your thumbs touch your sternum, close your eyes and just feel that, feel that gentle pressure against your chest. And then just let your thumbs make a tiny circle around your sternum, your breastbone. Whenever there is touch here or pressure, it's a signal to the vagus nerve that begins the relaxation response. So just this gentle rubbing And then open up your hands and shake. Just shake your fingers. Get some circulation down into your fingertips. Shake really hard, like wet hands. We're trying to shake off the water. Reach way out to the sides. Reach way up overhead. Out in front of you. And then three big shakes. One, two, three. Turn your palms up. Close your eyes again. And now feel that tingling in your fingertips. Breathe a little deeper, like you just can't quite sip in enough of this delicious oxygen. Mm, right here, right now, just settling into yourself. Right here, right now, just sending gratitude to yourself for making time today to be here, to be present, to be embodied. One more deep breath and gratitude for all who are joining us today, practicing together. I'm gonna float our fingers up to our shoulders. I'm just gonna do a little twisting breath. So you're gonna inhale on one side, exhale on the other. And as you exhale, you can either blow or make the SH sound. And then reverse the breath so that it's in and out on the opposite side. Sniff in a little deeper. Four, three, two, one. Come back to center, pause again, close your eyes, notice. Notice your center. Notice if there's any tingling in your head, your face, your fingers. And then roll your shoulders. Let's do this a few times, just really big, slow, exaggerated shoulder circles. Inhale to open your arms out wide, thumbs to the wall behind you, chest expands. Take in a breath here, just receptive, open, present. Let your arms lift all the way up, gather hands together, press through the center. Let's do that again, open out wide. Receive deep breath in, reach high. Come back to center, let's just do that one more time, open and reach and return to heart. Shift around to a tabletop position. Take your knees wide and stretch yourself back into child's pose. Just let your hips come back, head come down, walk your fingers forward. Really stretch your body out long here. And then walk your hands to one side, your hips to the other. Breathing into the rib cage. And switch that up, opposite side. Then 
And as we come back to center, lift and tuck your toes. Let's come into downward facing dog. Start to pedal your heels, kind of wiggle, move a little faster than you normally do. Do a little dog dance. Maybe take your feet a little wider, allowing for a little bit more space. And then settling in with heels a little closer to the ground, chest drops. And let's take a slow walk to the top of the mat. Meet here in forward fold. I'm having a wardrobe malfunction. So touch your fingertips, sway your body from side to side. Let this be a big, big breathy spray, sway. <laughs> what is going on? And release your fingers. Let's press to shins and then we'll sweep the arms all the way up, extended mountain. Reach for the ceiling, fingertips high, and exhale, hands to heart. Before we start to use our props, let's just go through two sun salutations, make sure our bodies are warm, our joints are loose. Let's reach high, deep breath in. Bow low, big breath out. Inhale, lifting halfway, and breathe out, downward facing dog. Coming forward into plank pose, knees or toes, lower halfway. Keep your elbows in close, and then melt to the floor. Come on up, cobra. And release downward facing dog, and let's pedal the heels like we did before, kind of fast. Little dog dance. And then feet to hands, lifting halfway. Sigh as you fold. Sweep high, extended mountain. And hands to heart, touch the sternum. That calming effect here. Beautiful, everyone. Let's go one more time. Rise up. Mm, bow low. Lift halfway. Step back and take that vinyasa on your knees or toes. Lifting to cobra or up dog. We'll meet in down dog and pedal your heels. And then walking forward, lift halfway and fold. Sweep high, come all the way up and back and bring your hands to your heart. Good, step with your feet just a little wider than hips distance, reach the arms out again, palms up, thumbs back. Feel that space and then palms turn down, reach behind, interlace, open up. Let's find a little back bend here. So the knuckles reach down, the collarbones reach high. And then hinging from the hips, knuckles lift up, head drops down. Release hands, come to shins and sweep all the way up again. This time cactus the arms. All right, I want you to just notice how your shoulders and chest feel here. We're gonna use our first prop. Uh, we're gonna take a strap in our hand. So this is just kind of the check-in to our range of motion and tightness here. <clears throat> so go ahead and grab your yoga strap or bathrobe tie, <laughs> whatever it is that you use. Mine is super long, so I'm gonna double it in half. And then the hands are as wide as you like. We're gonna take this band up and over. So start here with that first check-in stretch and then up and over. And you'll feel whether you need more or less length between your hands. 
just going to do this several times, range of motion. We call this flossing the shoulders, and I think it's a good idea to do this every time you floss your teeth. Take your bathrobe, tie off the back of the door, and just floss your shoulders a few times. And the next time we bring this band up and over, let's pause here with the band behind us. Find the place that feels the most resistant and hover up and down. Just hover up and down right there. That should be pretty intense. Maybe a little uncomfortable, but not painful ever. Mm. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could just be like this in life all the time, this open, this spacious, this free? And go ahead and lower the band down. So set that aside and let's just see if it worked. Inhale, arms up. Practice your arms. And gosh, it always just feels like I can move more freely here the second time around. It's like I have just a little more space and ease in my shoulders. So reach up and bow forward. If you have two blocks, we're going to come to all fours. If you don't have two blocks for this particular one, you're going to either stay on the floor or you could put both of your hands on a long pillow or bolster. So you just want your hands a little bit elevated, if possible. All right, so start here in tabletop with your hands on blocks. You're going to be a little bit higher than you normally are. Press up, open your shoulder blades, and then drop down. Keep your arms straight. So these are just little shoulder push-ups, teaching us shoulder stability. Try to keep those arms straight, elbows locked, chest just moves up and down between the arms. Good. Okay, so from here, we're moving into downward facing dog. I want you to make sure that your blocks don't slip out like that. So make sure you've got a good grip on what's underneath your hands and come up into downward facing dog. Maybe step in a little closer and now press. So I'm using the heel of my hands right on the edge of the block. And this is just giving me a whole bunch of room to stretch into. Nod your head yes, shake your head no. Just let your body be a little bit more elevated. Shift from side to side. And then as we release to our knees, keep your hands on your blocks, come into wide child's pose. The blocks can slide forward and your head's just gonna come down to the ground or toward the ground. Should be another pretty intense stretch. Deep, full, full breaths. And then release those hands right by your shoulders. Press up to a normal tabletop position. Let's take the right arm up and we're gonna scoop it through. We're gonna find the back of that shoulder now that it's a little looser and warmer. So breathe here into the back of your body. Come back to center, switch sides, left arm lifts, sweep it through. And back to center. Let's find these blocks again. So now keeping your hands on your blocks and always just listen to your body. If this isn't working for you, go to the floor. But we're gonna come into plank pose with our hands a little bit elevated. All right, so pushing down into those blocks, open up through the shoulder blades. 
And then if this is a yes for you and you're feeling good and you wanna try the next thing, flip to the tops of your feet, pull your hips forward, pull your chest up, come into upward facing dog. A lot of people find that easier um, with their hands a little bit elevated. Lift up, lift up. And then tuck your toes, downward <laughs> facing dog. Ooh, that was work, wasn't it? Again, we can come a little closer, the head drops down. And we're gonna walk our feet forward. Bring your hands to your shins, lift halfway, and then sweep the arms all the way up. Okay, let's find that cactus arms again. Just another little test. You should find maybe even a little more space there. Let's lift high, hands greet, come into chair. We'll do that a few times. Lift and lower. I always like to do these little movements in between deep stretches kind of dislodge and move things around. Good, one more time, everybody. Nice deep breath. And come down into chair, pause right here. Let's alternate heels off the floor. You can keep doing that or come into balancing chair up on your toes. Nice tall spine. It's hard to walk that way. Heels lift, head lifts, hips lower. Everybody breathe a little deeper. We wanna make sure our legs are nice and warm. And then let's drop the heels, lift up again. Woo. Lower your arms to your sides. Okay, so I'm gonna have these two blocks kind of a just in case kind of thing. So. I'm gonna stack these blocks here and we're gonna see about the height of these, okay? So let's start with our right foot crossing behind our left. Right foot crosses and then wiggle your feet so they're a little bit wider. And we're gonna fold here. So come down into a forward fold. The blocks can be here to rest your head. Isn't that nice? And then if you can go a little bit further, turn it onto its side, come a little bit farther. Your hands can stabilize on the floor. So just kind of taking the weight out of the low back and giving you an opportunity to stretch the outer hips. Breathe deeply here. In through the nose, out through the nose. And then just raise your head, move the block slightly out of the way. Let's walk our fingertips toward that back foot. So that should be a kind of an intense stretch around the outer hip. and come back to center, uncross your legs, bend your knees, rise up. Good, hands to heart. You should feel a little bit lopsided there. So let's switch. Let's take the left foot behind, widen your feet. The wider your feet, the more you're gonna feel that in the outer hips. And then hinging from the hips, we'll come down. And if you have, you, know, you could even use a chair or a stool just something to rest your head on that takes the pull out of the low back and invites the stretch more into the outer legs, hamstrings. So we're just here with deep, slow breath. I'm gonna test the waters. The sides might be different. Allowing your body to receive the stretch. And patiently waiting while the muscles release. 
Exhale long. And then just gently lift your head, move the blocks, walk your fingers toward the right. So toward your back foot. And let's bring our hands back to neutral, uncross your legs. Lift to shins and then rise. Oh, even now, right? Lower the arms. Shake out the legs. All right, so we'll be moving into some warrior poses now. We're going to need a couple of things. So uh, I'm going to ask you to take one block to each end of your mat. If you have two blocks, if not, you'll just bring one with you. And then let's take our strap. And if you have a yoga strap, I'd like you to make the loop in the end of your strap. And you want to have a loop that's about shoulder width apart. If you, if you don't have this technology, <laughs> you can um, just hold your band with your hands, okay? But get on Amazon today and get yourself one of these. They're kind of cool. So what we're gonna wanna do is have the, the band be able to resist our arms like this as we press out, okay? So have that ready. And we're gonna step out wide. So if you want, you can, you know, it's really fun is to jump out wide. And that's always where we get our best standing. Open the arms out wide and then turn the right toes. I'll mirror you, turn the right toes and come into warrior two. So we're gonna start with warrior two and we'll just do reverse and side angle a few times, get the torso nice and warm. Moving the arms laterally, the torso laterally. Good, move with your breath. And then come back to warrior two. Switch your feet, go to the left, warrior two. And when you get your feet planted, begin your reverse warrior to side angle. Just moving with your breath. and back to warrior two. All right, turn your feet, grab that strap, place it around your wrist or lower forearm so that you feel this really good tension. Feet are pointing to the long edge of your mat. This thing is gonna, long tail is gonna bug me, but we're gonna deal with it. So inhale the arms up and you're pressing out. So go back as far as you can and then lower the arms down in front of you. Lift and lower. Again, if you don't have the loop, you're just holding tension between your hands. So lift the arms up, turn your body to the right in warrior one. And then pull those arms back as far as you can without creating any strain in your shoulder or back. Warrior one, resisting outward on that band. Breathe. And then let your arms come out in front of you, open to the center, turn to your left. Warrior one, arms come up, press out on that band. Breathe, press. And then release the arms down. We're gonna stay on this side, the left side. Go ahead and drop a knee and come down to a kneeling lunge. The hands come to the inside of the foot. Here's your block and we'll come into um, lizard. <laughs> One or both elbows can come down to the block on any level. 
you can drop that knee out to the side and just feel that nice, loose, easy hip opener. Breathe deeply. Feel the breath in the bottom of your lungs, your low back, your hip. And then let's rise back up to that kneeling lunge. The knee comes up. Grab your strap behind you. You can just hold it in your hands or you can find that loop again. Chest expansion. So come into a back bend. Breathe deep. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Lift those arms as much as you can. Expanding through the chest. Release. Hands to the floor, tuck the back toes. Let's walk through center all the way around to the left, sorry, right foot now. And drop your knee. Pause for just a moment. Let that hip flexor come online. And then hands to the inside. You can use your block as we come into lizard. So the knee drops open. I like a block and two elbows, but for some of us, one elbow is plenty. Just close your eyes, breathe as deeply as you can. Embodied, aware of what's happening here and now. When breath makes it to the bottom of our lungs, that's another signal to the vagus nerve, communication to the brain, to open the pharmacy and start sending down those feel-good chemicals. Dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin. All the things we pay Big Pharma billions of dollars for right here in our brain. And deep breath is one way to signal the brain. Let's bring that knee back up, release the block, kneeling lunge, and then find your strap. Use your wrists in your little loop or just grab with your hands, open through the chest. Everybody breathe here. Now breath in the front of the body. Shoulders down and back. Mm, release. Let's stay on this right side. Tuck the back toes. Drop the heel. And let's use our block now on the outside of the foot. So I'm gonna take my block on its high side on the outside of my right foot, straightening the right leg, opening into triangle. We're trying to rely a little less on that block, finding that straight spine. To open that shoulder back just a bit. Look up, breathe deep. And bend the knee. Warrior two, switch sides. So as we come down, place that block on the outside of the right foot. The leg straightens, triangle. Put a bend back in the knee, warrior two. Let's do each side of that one more time. So we came up from the ground that time. Now we're gonna come from standing down into triangle. So shifting through the hip first, reach. See how my arms are staying flat and straight. Keep that as long as you can. And then just move your arms into triangle pose. So you're using a lot of core to hold you here. Feels good, huh? 
Back to warrior two, open in the center, switch. Trikonasana, so hinge from the hips, stick your hips out, they're kind of like sassy hips. Arms stay flat, reach, 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 reach as far as you can, then just windmill the arms. Gorgeous. Everybody turn to look at your top hand if that doesn't hurt your neck. Now bring this hand to your hip, top hand to your hip. Put a bend in your left knee. The hand comes inside and open into side angle. You can stay here or reach that arm up overhead, lower the block. We're here for three full deep breaths. A lot of the benefit of this pose comes from that tight squeeze inside of your left hip. So really let those muscles squeeze and ring out. And then we'll come to warrior two and switch it around to the opposite side. So bringing that block to the inside, placing a bend in the knee, and opening into side angle, arm up, or extended side angle, arm overhead. An experiment with different levels of block. Three full breaths, everybody. And then come back to your warrior two. Turn your toes. All right, here is another place where we can create a tower of blocks for our head. We're coming into a wide straddle forward fold, and you can start with the highest possible support you have under your head. And adjust your feet, and then explore. Maybe the, the middle side of the blocks. Maybe the flat side supports your head. Maybe one block. <laughs> Maybe you have a super bendy body and you can put your head on the floor. Breathe here, friends. Come into this nice long exhale for your whole body. Coming up, back up halfway. Let's bring our blocks toward our left foot, dropping that back knee. I'm using two blocks for this. We're gonna do this familiar rocking forward and back. Hamstrings. So as we move toward the splits, and remember this, we're already doing the splits right now. I'll give you a lot of choices. So option one is just to continue this forward and back motion. It should feel pretty good to your hips. Option two is to slide the heel forward and just come about halfway down and put your hands on your blocks and pause right there, that first edge of sensation. That really, that is the splits. It might feel nice to bring a block under that front thigh and just support yourself there. Again, that can be on any of its levels. A bolster might even feel better. We'll be here for a few breaths. So if you are feeling pretty good and getting a green light, just let your body go where it wants to go. Close your eyes and experience what's happening right now in your body. 
Your body is built uniquely. It's not like anyone else's body. Your pelvis, your femur bones come together in a perfect way for you. And they may inhibit some positions and they may enhance some positions. So what can you experience here in your body? So wherever you have found yourself, use your block or blocks to help you kind of come up out of this. <laughs> Easier said than done. Let's come into downward facing dog. And we're just gonna take that leg up and give it a nice big shake. And then we'll switch sides. So bringing the opposite foot forward, kneeling lunge, and let's begin rocking forward and back. Movement with breath. You can continue that movement or begin to slide yourself into more of a split. And if you're using a prop, just that goes right underneath your front thigh, not quite at the hip, about halfway down seems to be a good place of support. You're gonna find that perfect balancing point for your body. And if you're getting the green light, let your body be the way it wants to be here. If you feel the need to rush out of this pose, you've probably gone a little too far, gone over an edge. I'd like you to find pleasantly uncomfortable. <laughs> Whatever that is for you, pleasantly uncomfortable. And then we'll go ahead and drag ourselves back to center. Woo. Downward facing dog, everybody. Feel free to take a vinyasa if you like. We're gonna shake out the leg. And then slowly walk your feet towards your hands. Lift halfway and then sweep the arms up and find yourself standing on new legs. So grab your strap, let's do a balancing pose. So uh, let's stand on our right foot and we'll pick up our left knee. And then the strap goes around the bottom of that left foot. So that gives you kind of a new ground to stand on. And when you're ready, extend that leg. So it's coming out in front. And you can <laughs> whew, change the grip on the band. Eyes on one point. So in the early 1900s, a man named BKS Iyengar came to the West and started teaching yoga. And he had kind of an ailing body. Let's switch sides. Back in India, his teacher forced him to do all kinds of postures that hurt his body. And so when he came to the West, he started using props belts, chairs, and created, he, he's the grandfather of props in yoga. 
And he's famously quoted as saying, we want the pose to fit the body rather than the body to fit the pose. Let's come back and we'll do some more shoulder flossing before we come to the floor. So I think it's interesting that a lot of us view props as making our practice easier. When in fact, if we use them right, like we are today, they actually enhance our practice. They don't make it easier necessarily. They give us access to some different positions, right? Different parts of our body. Let's reach all the way up, stretch tall, and then come over to one side. Keep that tension on the band. Nice long side body stretch. Come back to center and switch. So I like to call them yoga toys or yoga tools because they're not always here to make it easier. All right, go ahead and relax your shoulders. Keep your band nearby. We'll take one more flow to the floor, rise up, bow low. Lift halfway and step back, downward facing dog. You're welcome to take one more vinyasa. We'll pause in a back bend. So choose either cobra or sphinx on your forearms or upward facing dog. And we're here for three full breaths. And then lower all the way down to the ground. Rest your head and wiggle out your hips. Windshield wiper your legs. And bringing our hands to our shoulders, let's rise up, sweeping the legs around. Have your band nearby. So let's begin by bending our right knee and straightening our left leg. Clear the flesh. And then sit really tall as you loop the band around the bottom of your foot. And you're going to pull those toes back towards you. So let's start by giving ourselves a really deep Achilles tendon calf back of knee stretch before we even move the upper body really get that lower leg and then keep that engaged hinge from the hips pull your chest forward so the back is still really straight you might get those hands a little closer to the foot keep pulling with a straight back so the band actually giving you something to pull making this a really strong version of Janu Shirshasana forward fold. Keep lengthening, keep lengthening. And this might be a great place to stay and work. If you'd like to add a block, a couple of options. If your hamstrings are super tight, place the block under your knee and then just do all the same things. If your hamstrings are pretty loose and you have long arms like me, put the block on the bottom of the foot and make your leg longer. Let's just fold over that leg. Breathe in, breathe out. And rising up, open your arms out to the sides and then just spin like a helicopter into a twist to your right. Returning to center, 
switch your legs. So we're bending the left knee, catching the bottom of the foot. I like to just hook the band right below the ball of the foot so it's nice and secure. So starting with toes back. Again, prop underneath that knee if your hamstrings are extra tight, that'll feel better. Pull back, pull back, and then use the strength of your arms to start bringing your chest forward. Spine stays straight. So notice here how strength and flexibility are both present. It's not one or the other. That's what I love about yoga. It's always both. Always strength and flexibility in harmony. So as we continue and starting toward that round back, add in a block if you'd like, below your foot, <clears throat> underneath your knee. Long exhales. <clears throat> And slowly rise up to a straight spine. Open your arms out like helicopter blades twist to your left. Sit nice and tall, turn to look over your shoulder. and return back home. All right, you probably had enough of this if you did Monday's core class, but what the heck, we're gonna do it again. So because we have our props, we're gonna bring a block right between our thighs, just above our knees. And let's just give you some options here. Option one, grab a hold of your legs, squeeze the block, lean back with your shoulder blades, but the, the lower back stays lifted great place to stay. Option two, hang on to your legs, but lift your feet, squeeze your block. Okay, it's bad news if I'm already shaking, right? Option three, float the arms. And then option four, out and in, squeezing the block. Try to keep your lower back lifted. Just a little core heat on our way to the floor. I promise you a reward for this. Cross my heart. And come back in. Sit as tall as you can. Remove the block. Open the feet into butterfly. And then use one or two blocks. Again, a place to rest your head. Feel free to give those blocks, put the blocks at any level. Might even put the blocks on your feet to find the perfect place. Just breathe here. Okay, we are heading into the best dessert you've ever had, a restorative Shavasana. So I'm just gonna make the assumption that we live in a perfect world and everyone has all these props. If you don't, you're just gonna kind of find what you have in your space. So I have a long bolster that I'm gonna be laying my back over. I have two blocks, or you could use two small pillows that will support underneath your arms. We're gonna turn and place our hips right here. We're gonna be laying over the bolster with our arms supported. But before you do that, if you want, again, the best dessert ever, and you do have a, block, a band that locks, 
You're gonna make your loop really, really, really big. If you've never done this, you're in for a treat, I promise you. Okay, so the loop's really, really big. I'm gonna just put this band around me and it's gonna go right underneath my waistband. So it's gonna really kind of tug in tight there around the top of my pelvis. Then it's gonna loop around the bottoms of my feet, which are in butterfly. So you can see that as I pull on the band, it's tugging at my low back in a good way, like supporting my low back and it's gonna hold my legs so I don't have to work. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. You might need to rewind this video later and kind of play with this position. So I've got my feet held in butterfly. I'm sitting back against the bolster. Hips are on the floor, laying back, arms supported. There is your dessert, your Shavasana. We're gonna lay here for three minutes. So do what you can to just get comfy. To close your eyes. To be supported by the props. And to notice this glorious, peaceful breath moving in and out of your body. Right where you are, take another deep breath in and out. Take your time moving from this resting position back to a seat. Letting breath lead the way. Fingers and toes and setting aside props. Let your body hold on to the calm that it has found here. When you find your way to a seat again, hands come together and let's touch the sternum once again with our thumbs and just make that little circular motion in front of the heart. 
Just another little signal from body to brain that all is well. Send those hormones this way. Give me some serotonin. Give me some dopamine. Give me the good stuff. And then just pausing with chin down a bit to breathe deeply in gratitude. Imagine looking at your image in a mirror, your beautiful sparkling eyes. And as you greet yourself at this mirror saying, I am so grateful for you. I love you. Thank you so much for making time for yourself today. Now maybe let's take some of this peacefulness beyond us into our circles. Just making our little part of the world a little brighter today. Namaste.